That was fine, but then, you know, you think, okay, next step, Hollywood. So I said, okay. So after winning a lot of big European awards, I went on to, to Hollywood. <coughs> I joined the, uh, was the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, nominated by Peter Yusinov and Roddy McDowell. And uh, I did a film called Ashanti. Ashanti is a very interesting film because it had a lot of very great actors in it. And really it was Michael Caine and me in the two principal roles and Peter Yusinov um, playing a supporting. But there were other great actors playing guest roles. There was Omar Sharif, there was William Holden, there was uh, uh, Rex Harrison. I mean, you see, get the DVD, it's, it's quite an interesting film to see. <clears throat> but there's an interesting story that happened to that film. The producer was a very mercurial, hot-tempered Swiss gentleman. And he made an arrangement with Warner Brothers to release the film at that time with 400 prints worldwide and spend $14 million on its promotion. Now, that was, those are big numbers in that time. So when the film was complete and Warner Brothers got this film, they did a test market screening in a few places to see how the audience might react to it, because it planned a big campaign. This producer heard about this and went ballistic. How dare you test my film? How dare you do this? How dare you do that? He lost his temper and filed all kinds of lawsuits against them. So they called him in. They said, Mr. Vuil, here's the deal. We promise to release this film. You have attacked us. We're going to respond. So, yes, your agreement says we will release 400 prints. We will release 400 prints in 400 years. Yes, we will spend $14 million in 14 million years. There was no time clause in the contract. So, that film's release got sabotaged in America and theatrically in a lot of places, but it still shows on television extensively in England, across America, etc. Then I did another film called Thief of Baghdad. Thief of Baghdad was the old classic with me playing the prince and Roddy McDowell playing the Thief of Baghdad. Peter Yusnov again playing the Khalif. And uh, that was an interesting film to make because there was a major accident in it where there was a scene where Roddy is taking off in the flying carpet with the princess and the whole rig came crashing down. So he was about 35 feet up and the rigging, that was, those wires that were taking his carpet up, that collapsed and the whole and the rigging missed him must be by about six inches. I was standing there, it missed him by about six inches. <clears throat> so filmmaking is not without its hazards. Then I got the Bond film Octopussy. Octopussy is also a very interesting film. Firstly, the Bond films are the longest running film franchise in film history. Um, they just completed 50 years. And to be part of something that's that big was something really special. Anyone who's doing any role of any significance in a Bond film gets immortalized by the Bond fans who are in their millions. The minute you sort of join the Bond franchise, there are these Bond clubs all over the world that start writing to you, fans start writing to you, and there's a reason for it. You know, the climax scene of Octopussy has Louis Jordan and me taking off in a plane. Roger comes galloping up on the horse, jumps on top of the plane. Plane takes off. Uh, Louis Jordan realizes that Bond is hanging outside. He asks me to go on top of the plane and fight him off. And eventually, of course, he bests me and I fall to my death. But to give you an idea as filmmakers, of the pains that they take to get things right. The shot of Roger Moore galloping and jumping onto the plane as it's taking off was shot in Udaipur. The shots of both of us fighting on the plane were shot in Pinewood Studios in London 
And the plates against which we were show shooting, where the plane, territory the plane was supposed to be flying over, those were shot in Germany. And the final shot of me falling off the plane was shot with a skydiver in America. So they were shooting on three continents to get one scene put together, because that's what the Bond people do. They strive to get it right no matter what it takes, and that's why it's been one of the most successful film franchises in history. I did a lot of television series, a lot of television miniseries, uh, and a few good films. But the problem there is, you know, they're not writing for people like me. They're not writing for any foreigners for that matter. American films are basically full of Americans. So if they're not writing for you, what do you even audition for? And the other thing was, despite being a star in India at the time, a big star in Europe, I still had to audition. They don't care who you are. Directors have a certain ego. Studio executives need to take defensible decisions. And I had to audition. Sometimes I was auditioning against people. I said, my God, this is, I'm auditioning against so-and-so, so-and-so, big names, or against newcomers. And sometimes a newcomer would take the role. So you have to learn humility. You have to learn humility. So if this is what I want, this is what I've got to do. <clears throat> what saved me at all times was the Italians. Because in between all those years of Hollywood, my getting or not getting roles, the Italians would keep calling me back for a miniseries. I did a number of other miniseries. I did Sandra Khan 2, then they made a four-hour sequel, then they made another six-hour sequel called The Return of Sandra Khan. Then they did a thing called The Mysteries of the Dark Jungle. So the Italians were always coming in with these projects, and that's what sort of kept me alive in, in, um, in uh, Hollywood. And eventually it also led to my uh, starring in The Bold and the Beautiful, which is uh, the second most watched television show in the world. What's the number one? Baywatch. You can't compete with Baywatch. Uh, but it is, The Bold and Beautiful is shown in 147 countries, watched by over a billion people. So to be on there for a year creates a whole new fan base globally for you. And I'm always curious when people meet me uh, abroad and say, I know you, you're Kabir Bedi. I always wonder which Kabir Bedi they know. Because there are people who've seen my Bollywood films, there are people who've seen my European films, there are people who've seen my American series. Nobody's seen it all. So, what do you know of me? That's my first question, is where do you come from? That gives me a clue. Then I probe to find out what they know me for, and I figure it out. But that's the thing about being global. Different people know you in different ways. Actually, speaking of Bold and Beautiful, I've done all the American soap operas. I did a thing called General Hospital, which is perhaps the longest running soap opera in the world. I did One Life to Live, which was also a very well-known American soap. So I did them all. I also did a very interesting cult film called uh, The Beast, um, which was actually directed by a very famous director called Kevin Reynolds, who did Waterworld, who did Robin Hood, etc. But this was a film that was, he had to prove himself. So he went to Columbia and he wanted to prove his, that he was a great director. He'd come out of USC Film School. And he said, for $6 million, which was a petty cash budget, I will make this film for you uh, in Israel with soldiers, with tanks, with everything. Because it, what it's about is film set in Afghanistan, set in Afghanistan as a fight between a Taliban group and a Russian tank. At that time, the Russians were occupying Afghanistan. So, and the fight is not just between this tank that's trapped in a valley and the Taliban. It's also a story about the conflicts within the Taliban and within the Russians. Old World War II commander, uh, the tank, these young pot-smoking Russians, you know, with generational differences. On the Taliban side, there's the greedy fellows, there's the religious fellows. So a brilliant document it was, and it became quite a cult classic, The Beast. <clears throat> its original title was The Beast of War. 
and we shot largely in Israel because they were the only ones who had captured Russian tanks from the Egyptians in the one of the Middle East wars. Um, so that was interesting. 